born of the mountains. Blood of the Indian. He lives by the way he hunts. He rekindles the fires of the past and roams in buckskin. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Well, I've been waiting all winter to finally get a good day so I could do some brain tan. Well, today we got it. If you look right here, I've got a bear from last fall. I've already taken the head out. I'm gonna show you how to brain tan this, leaving the hair on. Now in the past, I've done it brain tanning where you slough the hair off at both sides, make sure it's nice and clean, and done buckskin. Well, this is gonna be brain tanned with hair on. It's really good to know for any kind of hides you want, whether it's just a pelt, coyote, beaver, a bear hide like this, it's nice to know for all of them. Okay, the first thing you gotta do is cut the pad completely out. So I'll cut down here. Just because Laramie's cutting it off don't mean it ain't gonna get used. There's a lot of uses for the hand part of the pad. The Inuits, they'll take it and they'll boil it up and make a soup out of it. It's a delicacy to them. I wouldn't quite call it a delicacy, but hey, to each is their own. If you was of a mind to, you could call this finger food. Well, what do you think of that backdrop behind me? <laughs> yeah, it's calling my name too. You know, the mountain man, they had to come out of the high country every winter as well. You Just physically, you can't stay in there all winter. I mean, it's some rough, rugged area, deep snow, winds, cold. The mountain men, they used to come down and they'd go to rendezvous or they'd have a cabin down in a valley somewhere or something like that, and that's where they would stay the winter. You might be able to stay in there for periods of time, but, well, it ain't going to be very long. And I'll be right back up there. And when he's back on the mountain, Laramie needs to make sure he's got some hard bark on his back and his legs. And that's going to be one of his tasks this spring. Well, now that I got all these paws out, I'm going to save these. I've got some friends that will really enjoy them. <laughs> Me, not so much, but don't ever want to let anything go to waste. So now, Let's throw this over here. Bear skins were just one of the hides mountain men traded. Pelts came in all sizes, shapes, and colors. It's true, beaver were prized, but lots of other critters fetched high dollars too. And for that reason, most mountain men didn't gussy up in ermine and mink. Buckskin did just fine, with plenty of elk and moose around to provide it. The animals even supplied their own sinew for making sewing thread. The clothing store was all around for mountain men. And they did their shopping with their hawking rifles. Well, they may not have dressed in the latest New York fashions, but nobody could deny they was stylish, right down to their beaded moccasins. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull all this fat and meat off this hide with a knife. I'm gonna flesh it and get it down. You can see where you can kind of see those hair follicles. That's where I wanna get it down to. I wanna get this whole hide down to almost that. That way it soaks up that brain really good. I'll take the brain and I'll mash it up and I'll just work it into this hide. Then I'll roll it up, let it sit for an hour or two. Then I'll work it again. I'll apply more brain 
and I don't want to smoke it because it's still got the hair on. I don't want to risk that hair dying or, you know, those follicles coming loose to where it starts shedding and falling out. So it'll be done once I get the brain tan process finished. Flushing out a bear hide or getting all that membrane and meat off the face. It's after the fall, and Laramie's catching up on his chores, like flushing a bear hide so he can tan it the way the Indian and the mountain man did. Okay, now I've got a majority of that fat and meat off. I'm just gonna use a draw knife and flush this whole thing and get, get it down to where it's nice, all one color and thickness. That way, the brains will be able to penetrate it easy, or at least easier anyway. This is what taxidermists call fleshing down to the blue hide. Now you've seen me use a draw knife fleshing like this on beaver, muskrat, heck you've seen it on pine marten, deer, elk hide, a lot of different things. So I use the same tools just about every time. You know, having versatile tools is a big deal. When you think of the mountain men back in the day, they couldn't carry a bunch of different stuff. They'd use the same tools for the same purposes a majority of the time. To take off all the fat and meat, you can't go getting into a lather now. You know, the hardest part about fleshing out a bear hide or any animal you want to keep the face is getting all that membrane and meat off the face. Time consuming. You don't have to take the time to do this, but I like to just so it doesn't harden up on you. Okay, I've pretty much got a majority of the fat and membrane and everything off this hide. I want to go wash it really good before I take it any further. And then I'm gonna lay it just like this, let it dry, and I'm gonna take sandpaper and I'm just gonna rough all this up. And what that'll do is that'll help me get that off to where that brain can penetrate this hide a little better. And plus it'll take off all these little spots that are still left. I'm just gonna use this horse trough. It's already full of water and good to go. got a bear's jacket that is ready to drip dry. <laughs> no ironing necessary, of course. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just cut all this extra meat off and get down to the brain so I can pull the brain out of this to use to brain tan. It's a crazy thing to think that the Native Americans figured out that from the brain of an animal, you can tan a hide. And supposedly every animal has enough brain to tan its own hide. Crazy to me. I mean, I don't think I would ever try putting brains on a hide. Indians have been doing it for centuries though, and it's the natural oils in the brain that bring about the tanning. I got about a gallon of water in this pot and I'm just gonna scoop all the brains out and then I'll get a stick and mix it up real good. Warm it up and that'll be my brain mixture. One thing you don't want to do when you are warming it up is you do not want to boil it. Uh, boiling it would cook off all the tannin oils, which is something you don't want. Before you go cooking your brains, let Laramie remind you again. The one thing you want to remember is you don't want to get this hot enough to boil because then it'll cook your brain and it takes all those oil properties away and it won't work on your hide. So you want it to get warm enough, you know, lukewarm, maybe a little warmer to where your hand can still stay in there comfortably before you take it out. Thank you. 
In the time-honored tradition of using all of the animal you hunt, Laramie's got this bear hide fleshed out. Now, he's ready to tan it with a natural solution made from brains. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this really coarse sandpaper and I'm gonna run it over this whole hide. So it roughs up the fibers and makes it to where it'll be a lot easier to penetrate these fibers with that brain. Excepting for a few different tools, you can imagine the Indian following the same course to tan his hides. If he didn't have sandpaper, he might have had a pumice stone, or he could have used a shell, copper, bone, a horn, or even teeth as sanders. Well, as you can tell, the sun's uh, moving behind me, the wind's picking up. It just goes to show you how long it actually takes to do this. My brains are just about ready, so I'm gonna lay this on the ground flat so I can smooth the brains out all across the hide. An Indian or an old mountain man might have heated up his brain solution in a clay pot, but when it came to applying it to the hide, their tool would have been the same as Laramie's. Well, there you go. The one thing I want to make sure to do with this is don't set it in the sun or somewhere where it's going to dry out. You want to keep it nice and damp. You want to let that brain just penetrate that hide so it stays spongy. Now it's just a waiting game. I'll go take care of chores and I'll be back to that later. There's no end to the work that goes into tending four-legged critters. One chore involves Laramie keeping up his training to this young horse. Once Green broke, Laramie's been teaching him that there's a time for work and a time for play, forging a deep bond between man and horse. Well, what I'm doing today is my little boy, his pants are starting to wear out, so about time to make him another pair of buckskin pants. You can see right here, I've got half of a pattern already sketched out. I'm just gonna sketch out the other half, and then I'll just put them together, sew them. It'll have a button. It's gonna turn into a uh, stinky pair of buckskins, <laughs> literally. A little turd will run around and wear them out faster than I do. Well, there you go, now we have both sides. That's, that's the beginning of it. So I'll lay it out, I'll go through, punch holes. About every quarter inch. Okay, so now I've got all the holes punched. I'm just gonna thread this leather through. I'll knot it on both ends and make sure it's snug but not too tight and that's called a buck stitch. A buck stitch is just one thicker thread that goes down through and it'll hold this whole section. So I'll wind it all the way through down to here. This buckskin will last forever. It takes a long time for it to wear out. Even for mini squatches. You know, when I was a kid, I can remember going to my grandpa's shop and watching him work leather and he'd let me play and Maybe it was taking a hole punch and punching through some saddle leather or whatever it was. That's kind of where I got my start and my love for working with my hands, is watching him. Yeah. I wish I could remember when I was that small. 
Well, seeing as how I made Blaze something, I guess I better make Pepper something too. You know how jealous big sisters can get. The nice thing about this with hair on, you don't have to work it quite as much. Well, the job of tanning a bear hide is one you best not hurry. And while waiting on one hide, you can make some buckskin britches for the young heir apparent to the house of Sasquatch. Well, here's that bear hide I've been working on. I'm gonna unroll it, lay it on the ground, work it with my hands and let it dry. I don't want it to dry all the way, but I want it to, you know, not be so spongy. Then I'll add more brain, work it in, and this hide will be ready. The nice thing about this with hair on, you don't have to work it quite as much. You know, it's kind of crazy for me to think that every primitive culture on every con continent from China to Africa figured out how to tan hides. They used different substances. Some of them used oily bases, fatty substances. Others used yucca plants. Of course, you got a lot of the Native Americans used brain. They all knew how to soften a hide to be able to make it pliable to wear. <laughs> it amazes me that they went through the trial and error process to figure that out. <laughs> you know, this hide is working really well. It's soaking up all that brain. It's starting to dry, but it's still really soft and pliable. I'm impressed, it's looking good. I'm gonna let it dry some more, put some more brain on it and keep the process up because you can never have enough brain. The more brains you put on it, the better. It'll just be softer and more pliable and that's what you want. Well, I got about one more round of brains to put on this bear hide. But with this little bit of moisture coming down, I think I'm gonna roll it up and set it inside and wait out this little flurry that's coming through. If you're gonna live here, whether it's on the summits or in their shade, you best learn to love storms, clouds, and tireless winds. Work's never done. Time for another round of brains. You know, hair on brain tanning is a lot more simple than making buckskins. So it's nice every once in a while to get a little bit of a break and do a nice bear rug like this. And the one thing about a brain tan hide is it's way stronger than any chemical tan type. It'll last twice as long. It's stretchy, it's pliable. It's kind of a, an amazing phenomenon. Well, looks like that hide's about there. I'm gonna roll it up and be good to go. day to dry and I do believe that bear hide will be ready to hang on the wall but now it's time for some shut eye and at least for now Laramie can give his brains a rest <laughs> 